Hello everybody, this is geologist Paul Day. I wanted to do a quick video on this Kamchatka event. Uh, usually I'd wait a couple of days and see how everything plays out and then kind of do a sum up uh, long form video. Unfortunately, I'm scheduled to be out of town for the next several days and won't be able to do so. So I wanted to get a rough video in, kind of explaining the very basics of what seemed to be, seems to have happened in Kamchatka and what might also be happening across the Pacific Ocean in a broader sense with respect to a potential for a tsunami. Uh, the earthquake epicenter uh, is located right here. Right now, the USGS has it located uh, right here off the coast of Kamchatka. Kamchatka has active volcanoes. There are people live here. It's fairly sparse, but it definitely has active volcanoes. There's a fishing uh, community out there. There is some, there is a lot of, uh, there is some local industry that we need to be concerned about. This right here is the uh, Aleutian Islands. Attu Station is located right over here. And so the Americans are located very close by uh, this area. So we have very good coverage uh, in the United States of what happens right here in Kamchatka. What we're seeing here uh, is the landmass here. This is the Pacific Ocean over here. Uh, the, o the Okhotsk Sea is located up over here. Uh, and so the peninsula is separating these two things. We have a, a, a chain of islands here that is associated with a subduction zone. That subduction zone is located offshore right here, and it extends all the way to Japan. In fact, it is the same trench that created the 2011 uh, event uh, in Japan that wiped out the nuclear power plant and caused the meltdown uh, at Fukushima. Uh, this is old... Uh, when I say old, this is old, geologically speaking, uh, oceanic plate in the Pacific Ocean. It's about 100 million year old rocks right here. This is a little older, 140, 130, something like this, if memory serves. I'm doing this from memory. And uh, this is an area where rocks in the Pacific Ocean come to die and get cycled back in through your traditional rock cycle process that you've learned since uh, Geology 101. However, what makes this very interesting and kind of alarming at the same time is the fact that we have such a large earthquake, 8.8 uh, here, and of course the, J the Japanese event was a nine, uh, was larger than a nine, so it, it was absolutely massive. And as far as I could tell, this is the second largest earthquake to have happened, or possibly the second largest behind the 2011 one. So I need to verify that, but it's it's either the the first largest behind that one or the second largest. Either way, this is, has a very high potential for creating tsunamis. And uh, when we look at the Pacific Ocean, you could say, well, there's not a whole lot going on. Well, here's Hawaii, and Hawaii is uh, making sure that nobody's on the beaches. It's a, it's, it's a very dangerous situation. So we want to make sure that we have a proper understanding of this. So we're going to go to the USGS website and see what information is there and uh, cover it really quickly. All right, we are at the USGS website, and what you want to do when you come to this website is you look around, and what you find is uh, the latest earthquakes right here. Uh, there's a couple ways that you can find it. One way is that you can use this interactive map. The problem is, is when you have a large earthquake, the all the earthquakes all tend to cluster on top of each other, and you can't really tell which one is which. They're all kind of about the same size, and the large one is sometimes a little hard to you know to identify best way is actually to scroll over here so you grab the scroll you drag it down until you find the main event in this case it's going to be the 8.8 uh, it's easier to see because you notice that they put major events in red and fortunately the 8.8 .8 is also in red and the moment you you select this you immediately get information telling you details about that event and sure enough there's that epicenter it's located right up over here and it's telling you information about the shake map, what's going on with the pager. We'll talk about that here in a moment. And that there's a tsunami risk. That's what that symbol means. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on this, pull it open, take a look at what's going on here. Uh, and it's immediately there's some information that to a trained geologist just jumps out at you. Uh, some of the stuff that you want to recognize right away is, uh, in this case, uh, did you feel it? Make sure that if you are somebody that experienced this earthquake and you happen to be watching this video, please come to the USGS website. Did you feel it? That's going to occur here. You could fill out a questionnaire if you select that. 
And that information tells us something about the degree to the amount of damage it might have done. Now, uh, where do we want to start here? The shake map is probably a great place to start. Shake map is the experience by human beings of this earthquake. There's the epicenter located right up over here. And the colors will tell you the extent to which you might be uh, experiencing this earthquake, you know, with heavy shaking or, or not heavy shaking or whatever. And sure enough, we'll recognize here it's this orange. It's going to be in, it's going to be in intensity number eight. Uh, this is uh, moderate to heavy damage, uh, severe shaking. This is a very, very dangerous event. Uh, and, and in fact, it's almost kind of shading into the orange or red portion up over here. So there's probably people that felt like this was violent and heavy shaking. Uh, I've already seen some of the videos that came out. People immediately posted on their cell phones and it's pretty violent. It's a, th these, uh, these types of uh, earthquakes that are produced by these types of faults can be intense. When we come down over here, we see something called the moment tensor. I don't want to get into this too much and what this means, but this is telling me as a scientist that this is a mega thrust fault. It's a uh, mega thrust fault is, a, a, is the old way of saying uh, subduction zones. Uh, subduction zone, you know, you almost get the impression that rocks are just kind of sliding down and subducting nicely down into the mantle. Uh, it's not always the case. In fact, if you think about the way that these rocks are going down, you have one rock that's staying relatively stationary relative to the other one. One's going down, the other one's riding up over it. And so what we're seeing here is a fault plane solution that indicates that there is exactly that happening here. This is a very violent breaking of rocks in that area that is going to uh, uh, deform the, the, the seabed in some way. And the evidence of that is the fact that we've got a tsunami hazard. Uh, before we get to the tsunami, we'll, we'll look at that here in a moment. I want to look at the pager. This is where we're going to get some idea really quickly of the economic losses and expected fatalities. Fortunately, this is a, not a heavily populated area. There are people that live there, but we are expecting fatalities. In this case, 44% chance of it be, being between 10 and 100 people. Uh, that's, that's unfortunate. Uh, the economic losses is going to be, you know, in U.S. millions, uh, between 10000 and and $100,000 million, right? That's how that works. Uh, in terms of exposure to shaking, the earthquake happened here. These are the zone maps here. The yellow is indicating that you are going to be subjected to, you know, this, this section right here of intensity 6. Uh, intensity 7 and intensity 8 are going to be closer in. And so if you're in this area, this is what you experience. So this is definitely impacting people for sure on that peninsula. What you also want to do is go to the tsunami. Oh, by the way, here's the origin. The depth is 20.7 kilometers. So this is something quite deep. Oh, by the way, before I get out of here and look at tsunami, let's go to ground failure. Uh, landslides and liquefaction has a very high potential for uh, landslides. Uh, in fact, significant to extensive. Fortunately, there's very few people living there. So the expectation is, is that while there's a very significant threat of landslides, the number of people who will be impacted by those landslides should be relatively limited compared to if it was to hit in a place, say, like Los Angeles or New York. Um, liquefaction. Um, not that an earthquake like this would happen in New York, but just to give you an idea of the population. Uh, liquefaction, significant, again, limited because there's fewer people that live there. So the, the, there is going to be liquefaction almost certainly associated with this event. Um, in fact, let's click this. Yeah, so there's already documented liquefaction here. That's, that's incredible. Let's see if we can zoom in. So yeah, here we've got liquefaction that is happening. Wow, what an incredible map. Okay, let's uh, let's see if we've got the same thing with landslides. Let's take a quick look at the landslide map. And yes, it looks like we've got uh, some issues with landsliding that's happening on the areas with very high slopes with uh, significant topography, especially in the coastal area. Look, look right up over here. Okay, now what you want to do is go back and check and look at tsunamis. And so tsunamis are next to the moment tensor. 
select there that opens up this window right here and uh, there's a couple things that you can do to look around here but the first thing we want to do is go to the proper location so up over here you'll notice where it says uh, products and, and messages go down to tsunami tsunami data go to water level data and then we're going to go to the NOAA coast water level stations we're going to click that that opens up this window right here what we want to do is see if we can track the tsunami and get an idea of how big it is, what's going on as it's moving through here. And sure enough, here's the event. These pins right here are actually locations of earthquakes. And what we want to do is look at what's going on with the tides. So we have tide stations that are monitoring, you know, high tide and low tide. It's all predictable. The, the physics is pretty well worked out. And so you can predict tides well in advance and you can look at tides way in the past. Um, and so we have a pretty good understanding of where the water level should be and if there's any disruption. So what we could do is, uh, provided there's not so much traffic that we can't get in and doesn't crash us, uh, we should be able to click one of these. Let's see here. This is, uh, well, let's try this one here. Uh, this is Amchitka, I guess, Island. Let's see if this works. Frequently when these uh, events happen, the uh, websites are all, they all crash because everybody's looking at the data together and that seems to be the case right now it's not opening up so after uh, refreshing my browser a couple of times i uh, finally was able to get through and get that data and it popped up uh, after a while uh, th there's obviously a lot of traffic coming in here right now and it's crashing their servers most likely or at least it's making things very slow uh, but here we've got uh, that curve this is the water level uh, and we see right here that there's a very rapid up down motion moving through here it's not a nice smooth tidal curve that's coming through here so those water levels are clearly being disrupted by the tsunami and we can see that it's coming into this location on that island here the other thing that's kind of interesting is we can measure the height uh, right here it's a uh, you know 0.995 meters and then there's a trough right here and that's 0.35 this is not a very large uh, oscillation up and down, at least at this location. Uh, that doesn't suggest a very large uh, tsunami has moved, at least into that location. So we need to keep an eye out on this and uh, pay attention to what might be happening in Hawaii. But I have a feeling that the event that's going to happen in Hawaii is going to be also relatively small. Uh, but we're going to keep an eye on it. A magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake is quite capable of producing very large tsunamis. So uh, it really depends upon what's going on with the ground rupture to see how much disruption is happening in that water column. Uh, let's see if we can find one more place to check out. All right, so we're back to this map right here. And let's tr see what's coming on. Let's see here over here in Hawaii. Actually, we've got a gauge right here on Sand Island. Let's see if we got water levels here. And sure enough, we're now looking at data for Sand Island, which is at Midway Island, which is just west of Hawaii. And sure enough, we're seeing something very similar. We are seeing these curves that are moving through here. And sure enough, very rapid up-down motion here. Uh, but again, uh, here we're seeing a motion of, uh, you know, a height of about one and a half, almost two meters you know, roughly um, at its peak with a deep trough. So we have a, a peak coming in at a trough uh, initially, and then we have this high peak that's happening right here. So the high water mark is coming in and it's, it's, it's substantial. I mean, you can measure it quite easily. It's something that is very different. Yeah, 1.57 meters, 1.79 meters. So this is a, this is a very, moderate event to say the least it's probably not going to set off a whole lot of alarm bells in hawaii but we'll we'll see um, better safe than sorry i'm not saying go down to the beach and take any pictures but you should be very careful this is not a very large event uh what we're seeing at midway island but uh you know different harbors you know hilo hawaii for example has a harbor that tends to amplify and so the what seems to be a very small tsunami in other places suddenly becomes a big problem in places like that. Uh, we're going to find out soon. All right. Thanks for uh, 
checking us out, and I hope uh, everybody turns out to be okay. Take care. Bye.